Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Everything OneNote. Today I'm talking remote learning and I'm going to come up with some of my five best tips for creating worksheets for the kids to be able to access and do during remote learning. So I know across the world, a lot of places and a lot of schools are still very much doing remote learning. I live in Queensland in Australia. We are fully functioning normally again, but last term we did go through four or five weeks of remote learning. So I have learned a few things. And if the event comes back that, you know, we do need to go remote remote learning again, these are going to be some of the things that I'm going to be putting in place in my worksheet. So the first five things I'm going to talk about are inserting audio, inserting video, self-assessments and check-ins, reflective thinking and challenge questions. So integrating a combination or one or more of those things into your worksheets to try and make life a little bit easier for the students. And if you use these five things in combination with the assignment feature in Teams, if you do have access to Microsoft Teams, it is really cool. There's 10 um, advantages, I guess, more than just normally distributing in OneNote. I'm not going to go through them all. I do have a video already that goes through all of that sort of stuff. So I'll probably put the link at the bottom of this video as well, or you can search for it. But creating the assignment feature in Teams is really, really cool if you're not using it already. So let's get straight into it. My first one is integrating audio. So very, it's a very quick and easy thing to do and enables you to give some explanation on a worksheet or it could be a content page um, without really much work at all. So using that um, insert feature at the top, choosing audio recording and just talking away. Now this audio recording I have here, I'm gonna quickly play it. All right, so in this worksheet we're looking. That'll do. And you can see that's a video of me, it goes for a minute 42 and that's me essentially explaining what the students are required to do for that worksheet. Now, that's just one big audio recording. Another idea would be to create, you could have to do an audio recording for every question. I could have an insert audio here, or it could just be that maybe for the more difficult questions that require more explanation, you can put in an audio there. And the flip version, obviously, if you wanna get some student voice and a bit more engagement, get the students to record their answers well rather than typing. So making use of that insert audio feature, the next one is to insert a screen recording or a video to the top of your worksheet. So it's a bit more prep. I recorded this with Microsoft Stream and basically uploaded that into then my OneNote, put the link in, and the students are then able to watch this video of me essentially explaining the worksheet. So it's a little bit better hey than guys, just an audio as obviously they get some visual, they can see what I'm clicking on and where I'm talking about different things. I can even type some suggested answers in there. The kids also have the option to obviously pause, go back, rewind, watch that again. They can watch the specific point related to specific questions, but a bit more work, but really um, creates a lot more visual and engagement for the kids to be able to essentially have you there in the classroom without you being there as well, okay? So that's integrating video explanations into your worksheets to simply just explain what is required or what you want to see in a few questions in that worksheet. And the next two I've combined together is a self-assessment and student check-ins. Now, self-assessment, what I've done here, I've just created a little rubric at the bottom of this worksheet here. It's essentially, it's linked to the success criteria for this topic. So what I've done is I've listed the success criteria along the top and then the students need to rate themselves green, orange or red based on how they're feeling or thinking about each of those topics or success criteria related to that topic. So if they're feeling that they are struggling with defining and understanding how a credit report works, they might give it a red or an orange or if they're feeling great, they're going to give it a green. So it's a really quick and easy way for you to get some feedback on the students on how they're feeling or understanding the content that they've just gone through. The next one is a student check-in. For remote learning, I think it's very important that we're constantly checking in with our students and trying to figure out how they're going, how they're feeling, how they're doing. I know in my case, in our online meetings, a lot of my students were camera off, mic off, and whether they were there or not, I'm not really sure, but um, they didn't want to talk much. So it was often a one-way street in some of my online Teams meetings. There's only a few students that actually did like to talk, but if they're able to be able to give some feedback in a private space, come back to you on how they're thinking and feeling about, it could be specific to the content or it could just be in general. They can, um, I've created this little infographs 
It's very similar to one Nathan did where a video on determining student emotions. So I've kind of modeled that. They can tell you if they're feeling great, if they're doing okay or not feeling it. And I've added some bit modes just for a bit more color and engagement. And then get them to list any thoughts or feelings they want to share. It could be anything. It could be that their dog did something funny this morning or their mum yelled at them or they're feeling a bit down or they're feeling great, whatever it is. Um, even just asking that for some student might be enough to just show that you're still there, you still care, you're still there for them, you still want to support them. And the next one is reflective thinking. So if you watch the videos, I've got a few already on reflective thinking. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this one, but a couple of examples of once they've done an activity, trying to get them to guess, think back on how they went in that activity and how they think and feel. And there's a variety of different reflective thinking strategies out there. This example is a think puzzle explore. And another example I have is I used to think now I know. So um, if you do want any of those templates, make sure you go to the OneNote, find them, copy them into your own. And the last one is looking at some of, I guess, our more advanced um, students and giving them some kind of a challenge question or some more of an advanced question that they can continue on. The, the students that always finish their work a little bit earlier than the others, give them something to continue on with. I've just done one challenge question here. In one of my other videos, uh, I talk about challenge questions and self and the students being able to choose a gold, silver, or bronze question so they can then choose at what level they want to do an extension question. In this example, I've only given one, but just having something for us, I guess, our more advanced kids to go on to afterwards. So there are my five tips for uh, creating worksheets in remote learning. Obviously, integrating those things, you don't have to have all of them. You might sporadically put it one or two or three of them across your worksheets in conjunction with the team's assignments is going to make life really, really easy. And you're able to track and see how the kids are going when you're not able to have that face-to-face -face interaction that we normally do. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did like this video and took something out of it, make sure you hit the like button below. Um, any comments you have or feedback, please put them in the comment section. We love hearing from you guys trying to answer some of your questions or if you have any ideas for OneNote videos, we'd love to hear from you um, and we can possibly create a video based on an idea you've suggested and obviously subscribe if you want to get some more updates. Thanks for watching. Ciao.